A heartbreaking story out of Britain. A British court is keeping the parents of a British baby named Alfie Evans from seeking treatment for their sick child. Evans is currently on life support as the result of a degenerative neurological condition, and the courts would rather pull him off life support rather than allow the family to seek alternative treatment options elsewhere. Tragically, this is what happens when you give government absolute control over health care. And be warned, this is what liberals like Bernie Sanders and Keith Ellison want to bring here to the United States. With me now to break this down from the Heritage Foundation, Bob Moffitt. Bob, thanks for joining me. It's a, it's a pleasure to join you, Liz. It, it's a tragic story that we have to talk about today. The parents of this child, Alfie Evans, want to keep him alive. They want to take him to Italy, actually, because a doctor or a hospital there says, listen, there might be one more thing that we could try here, an experimental treatment. No one would blame the parents for wanting to try anything before you know, they lose their baby, they lose their child here. The <coughs> government not only ruled that they couldn't do this, police actually blocked the entrance of the hospital when the father of Alfie Evans tried to take him away. It's outrageous. I mean, what you're looking at is an exercise of powerful government. Basically, it's bad enough when government officials try to play doctor. It's worse when they start to play God and decide that they're going to exercise power over life and death. Liz, only God has the power to uh, exercise control over life and death. This is an outrage, really. It's not that the doctor's decisions are wrong. The doctors might be right. The British doctors might be right and valid in their diagnosis of the case, but they have no right to deny the right of the parents to try to take an alternative route or to find an alternative therapy or to seek a second opinion. It's really an outrage. It is, and you make a really important point here that the doctors may not be incorrect. In fact, it's likely that they are correct, but they are not the arbiters of life and death. Uh, in life and death. Neither is the government, neither are these court systems. I mean, the court actually ruled, this is a direct quote from them, that it would be wrong and pointless to seek treatment other, in any other way. Pointless, Bob. They said it would be pointless to try anything else. I mean, what does that say to you about their view on the dignity of life? Well, it says very little about their view about the dignity of life, except that they might not have a view about the dignity of life at all. But how would they know? that it is pointless. What gives them the authority to make a determination that doctors in Rome are incompetent or incapable of making a separate diagnosis or offering a separate opinion? The fact of the matter is they are not capable of making a medical decision. The parents are not capable of making a medical decision, but they are capable of seeking the very best advice. And what has happened here is they are being denied a very basic freedom, the freedom to seek the best possible care for their child. This is an outrage. It's a violation of civilized behavior, as far as I'm concerned. This is really a, this shines a light on what happens when you give the government this kind of power. And this is a raw exercise of power. It is, and it's the complete denigration of parental rights, too. In the United Kingdom, apparently any time that parents and doctors disagree on what path to take for treatment for children, the courts in the United Kingdom tend to intervene, especially, and this is the part that's so chilling to me, as a practicing Catholic, as a woman of faith, as someone whose family uh, is, is a religious family, especially courts intervene when there's a difference between doctors and, pa doctors and families when it comes to religious beliefs. It's outrageous. And the fact of the matter is, is that the state does not have a right to make a determination about whether or not your religious belief is correct or incorrect. The government has no competence in these areas. The issue here is the right of a person to exercise their free will in protecting their own life and the life of their child. Uh, we, have, we have a tradition in the United States, uh, and frankly, it's kind of ironic the Declaration of Independence, which separated us from the British crown, affirmed that among the natural rights of every uh, of all men is the natural right to life, uh, the right that is given to us by God's creation or, or the creator God himself. Uh, the, for the state to interfere with that fundamental right is a violation of everything that we have, have worked for over the past 2,000 years of civilization to try to build up a respect 
for the truth, uh, for the personal human dignity and freedom of every in individual. Every individual counts, even children who are seriously ill. And every parent has a right to exercise their freedom in protecting those children and giving those children options and giving those children a chance at fighting for a better life. This is really a very serious development, I think. And I'm quite sure there's going to be a lot of rever reverberations from this case. Right, and I mean, it beautifully said. I couldn't have said it better myself here. And I think it, it, it heightens our obligation to when the person in question is a person who is vulnerable, who is a child, who is ill, who cannot speak up and defend their own rights. It gives us an even higher bar for ethical behavior, and it makes it even more egregious, in my opinion, when the government violates that right. Also, and I, I want to make this point too, Bob, is in the practical sense, if in the United Kingdom, and this has happened, by the way, here in the United States, as well. This is not just something that happened in a land far distant from us. This has happened in a very similar situation here in the United States. But in a practical sense, if parents lose the right to make decisions, lose their parental rights as a whole, when they uh, take their child in for care, isn't this going to discourage parents from actually seeking health care for their children? Well, of course. I mean, obviously, if the government is in the position of intervening, between the parent and the child, you're giving the government power that government should never exercise. And it's certainly it's discouraging. Uh, we have to be on guard here. I mean, I am certain, once again, let's be clear about this. The British doctors may be absolutely correct in their diagnosis of the situation uh, that they see before them, that little Alfie Evans, 23 months, probably does not have anything other than a terminal end here, a terminal illness that cannot be cured. They may be absolutely right on that. What they, where, where, and I don't blame the doctors here. I, what, I, what I do blame is the system, the British system that puts itself uh, in the place of the parents as the ultimate decision maker over the welfare of the child. We have to be very, very, very much on guard. And you know, what's stunning about this is that this is Great Britain. This is not an uncivilized country. It is not a communist dictatorship. It is a, it is a civilized Western European country and exercising this kind of power. And it, it really is, it's very disturbing. It's stunning. It is, it, and it's disturbing. It, and you're absolutely you right, this it, is not Cuba. This is not the Soviet Union. This is not Venezuela. This is Britain, one of our closest allies, one of the most developed nations in the history of the world. If it happens, make no mistake, if it can happen in Britain, it can and it probably will happen in the United States. This is the type of system, and you are 100% correct to blame the system, not the doctors. It is this type of system that liberals like Bernie Sanders, liberals like Keith Ellison, want to bring here to the United States. This idea of Medicare for all, this idea of a single payer system, this idea that government would be in charge of our health care, this is what happens when government is in charge of our health care. This is why it is imperative that we say, not here, we value our rights too much in this nation to give them away to a government that serves as an arbiter of life and death. Bob, thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it.